All right, we are recording. And in this webinar, we're going to be talking about affiliate marketing. So Ticker gets a lot of affiliates joining our, our Redditus is who we use for our affiliate program. And anybody who joins it as an affiliate, you know, you can make a reoccurring revenue stream. But the problem is a lot of people aren't able to make any money. So in this webinar, we're going to help answer that question is how do you make money? What are the, the most tactical ways? What are the best ways to make money, especially passive income or somewhat passive income as an affiliate? Um, and it doesn't just apply to Ticker. It's if you work with any other programs out there. This education will definitely help you if you are building an audience. How do you make more money? So I have an expert on the call here, Mike Killen. He's based out of London area, and calling in a few. Yep, <laughs> calling in a few hours later, but. Um, He's going to show us some of his strategies. I might chime in with one or two of my own, but I'd say, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background, Mike, and then we can go ahead and dive into some of the tactical strategies. Yeah, sure. So uh, thank you again for having me on, uh, Sean. Really good to to uh, catch up with you again and be on here. So um, the business now, the business that I run is almost exclusively based off of affiliate income. So my job is now spending eight, 10 hours a day, just thinking of content that would promote any sort of affiliate stuff that we have going out there. So that's what I do now. Previous to that, we ran a coaching and consulting company. I've co co I've consulted with everyone up from, you know, JP Morgan, Walgreens, all the way down to kind of the individual um, smaller agencies. And then before that I ran an agency. So in around 2016, we managed to exit that from by uh, passing it over to a media company, and I was earned out. Uh, and so now my job for the company is, uh, for my company, is creating mm -hmm. content, and we create all of all of our income is based around affiliate income, um, wow. which you mentioned kind of passive income, and it's interesting you were like, it's passive ish with like a caveat <laughs> and i agree i don't think there's such a thing as passive income right. at all but <clears throat> there is there is a, a kind of a terminology around scalable income which means that mm -hmm. the the content that i've produced that's out there now produces me revenue years in some cases there's probably some stuff that's over a decade old that's still producing revenue for right. us so that's the yeah, and and that's the methodology I want to share. Yes, it takes time to set it up, and there's there's a bit of work up front, which I don't think is different from any other methodology. But the fact that now our team we can sit back and spend more time creating content that we really like, knowing that at some point in the future, from day one, but whenever we launch it, it'll it'll continue to make money, and, and that kind of snowballs from there. So that's that's what we're going to be talking through today. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm excited to dive in and learn what you're doing. Now, I got to ask you, what channels are you primarily focused on? I know my audience would ask the same thing, but is it primarily YouTube or do you write blog posts? Where are you at? Yeah. So we started as a, a blog, purely a blog. Okay. Um, and now everything is on YouTube. That's what I've decided to focus. We did have, we did used to have everything and kind of did a bit of content repurposing. <sighs> I personally have never found that to be particularly successful. I know there's people out there who can do it. I know there's people who are out there doing really well at it. It just didn't suit us. It's quite expensive to get a team to propagate it across multiple platforms. Um, I don't think it's as cut and dry as everyone makes it out to be. So now we're predominantly focused on YouTube, but I'll be honest, the number one, the number one revenue generator for the business is still email marketing. Um, okay. we typically use YouTube at the top of the funnel and we do make sales from YouTube. Uh, but then I try to get people onto my list, for, um, as quickly as possible because I, I kind of want to own that part of the turf. Yeah. They work very, very well together. And there's a few other kind of content pieces that I'll touch on. And anything I talk about here is not necessarily exclusive to YouTube. The methodology is applicable to any platform i just happen to choose youtube because that's where i spend most of my time anyway so i figured mm -hmm. well we might as well put the business there does that, does that make sense 100 percent. and just kind of define here for the audience top of the funnel is like that's bringing your leads least mm -hmm. amount of friction 
you know, you're providing value to them first and then they opt in to some kind of email system where they join a platform for free, that's top of funnel. And then bottom of the funnel is where um, they're more converting to a, a paid customer. Yeah, sorry. That's that's. I used to run a funnel agency, so mm -hmm. this jargon just falls out, and I apologize. You're <laughs> I right. get it. Top top of the funnel, exactly as you state. The kind of the people who have just kind of discovered that you exist, and they kind mm -hmm. of just have that first touch point, yeah. maybe the first video that you see, or the first the first result on the top of a search term. So yeah, cool. Well, I say let's dive in. You put together uh, sounds like a whiteboard, or <clears throat> what do you got? Yeah, yeah, a little bit of a whiteboard. I haven't got. Um, Tons of slides. I don't think I've done slides in ah, uh, 10 years don't now. Don't even uh, worry about slides. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm going to share my screen. Sure. And so hopefully can you see a little I, I can see whiteboard yeah. there. Yep. Okay. Perfect. So I'm going to move you over here. All right. So I guess the first thing I actually want to kind of focus on is there's a little bit of an understanding as to where you're going to make your first sale or where you're going to make your next sale and also how to do that regularly. And that's a big part of this framework is affiliate marketing, in my opinion, is it's one of the best models out there in terms of being able to focus on the income generation because it, for, for, for a platform like yourself, Sean, I'm happy passing the responsibility of delivery over to someone like yourself, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not an expert in the app. I'm not an expert right. in working with those. I'm certainly not a developer. So to me, you guys take a, it's it's a 30, 70 split, right? For affiliates. Yeah. We give our affiliates 30% yep. reoccurring commission. Exactly. Which is extremely generous. So if anyone's on this platform, by the way, this is a very, very generous affiliate um, program. Um, the, to give a bit of background, anything less than that, personally, I don't go after now, but that's because I'm lucky enough to be in the position mm -hmm. to where I can kind of make these sure. calls. But to be able to find something like this here is is it's 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 relatively unheard of. And in my opinion, I'm happy to pay from my standpoint as an affiliate, I'm happy to pay Sean 70% to handle all of the admin updates delivery in my kind of the way that I work it out in my head is if I'm doing all the sales and all the work up front, I'm happy to then give 70% of that back to Sean to say, you handle the delivery now and give the best possible customer experience. So that's yeah. how I tend to justify that. Right. Cool. When we look at, actually, let's talk about what the, the kind of the two goals that I want us to, to hit first. The first one is I want us to land our next sale. Now, this could be your first, uh, it could be your next, it could be your next five. It's almost irrelevant. The, the methodology that I'm going to share with you is what I use on a weekly basis to drive sales for the three or four products that I'm an affiliate of. And then the second thing um, is to basically create this with some kind of recurring process both in terms of the recurring revenue, but again, Sean and his team are, are very generous enough to take care of that part. But one of the things that I have found has been so detrimental to affiliates, but to be honest, to businesses in general, is this kind of launch cycle where we will, over a period of time, we'll say, okay, we're going to launch it. We'll see a bunch of sales and then we do nothing. And then we think, okay, we're going to ramp it up and launch it and then nothing. And then it's mm -hmm. just that over and over and over. And that to me is exhausting uh, it's time consuming. And because we're all creative people, we like doing good work. We want to be seen to be doing valuable work. What we tend to do is take a different angle with every single launch. Every time we create a campaign, we think, well, now we've got to think of a different hook or a, a different angle, different campaign. And that to me is just exhausting. So the methodology that I want to share with you guys is something that just works over and over and over you're only going to be focusing on kind of one core thing that you're going to be offering. And then every once in a while, we're just going to send that out to our list, out to our social platforms, onto our videos, onto our social content. It doesn't really matter. So I hope that uh, kind of sets up um, how little work I want you to be doing. I don't mm -hmm. necessarily say it's going to be no work, but hopefully it's a lot less than constantly, constantly launching. Right on. So let's do a little bit of a, an audit first. I think this is usually the, the best kind of place to start at is 
I want us to take a look at where our audience currently is. So what I mean by this is, do we have an email list? Are we on Facebook? Are we on YouTube? And this is where we just list out all of the places where we've got some kind of platform. Yeah. And like I said, I had a team of people and we were on everything. And even we found that too exhausting. So now personally, we have focused in on YouTube and email. Yeah. But this process is applicable to uh, the, the newer platforms like TikTok. It's appropriate for the older platforms. If you have a blog, I'll even show you kind of one of my favorite lead generation methods is writing a book. So to date, the four or five books that I have out there, roughly anywhere between 30 and 100 sales a day on um, like Amazon. And they're amazing lead generators. Now, there are a lot of work to set up. They, <laughs> they obviously take the time to write a book, but I want to show you that this methodology is suitable for the latest and flashiest stuff that all the kids are using all the way down to books which have been around for you know a thousand or so years so we've got this concept of where our audience is i then want to look at what the size of the audience is i'm a big believer in low-hanging fruit and so if I've got an email list, and by the way, if you say you have an email list of like, oh, it's only 20 people, it's probably larger than that. If you look at the size of your network and you've got your CRM, the people you've sent invoices to, the people you've had conversations with in the past, try consolidating that into one list and you might surprise yourself with just how large it is. So I like to now start kind of writing the numbers and I might say, well, I've got, you know, a thousand people on my email list. Maybe I've got 500 Facebook friends, YouTube, maybe I've got a thousand subscribers. We'll talk about that in a second. TikTok, maybe I've got 2,500 followers. And in terms of books, like I say, maybe I sell 10 a week, 10 a day or something like that. Mm -hmm. What this does is give you an idea of where you want to start pushing the content. And I am going to give like actual templates that I use, the, the emails that I use. I, uh, Sean, I think you mentioned that you've got some as well. So um, this is really, really powerful to know where are you going to be sending it and who you're going to be sending it to. Um, and then the final thing, this is probably the hardest part, is to understand the avatar that is in each of those audiences. I don't necessarily mean LinkedIn is full of businesses, YouTube is full of gamers and streamers. Facebook is full of like old people. That's not necessarily what I mean. What I mean is on Facebook, the majority of the people that I know are my friends and family. For example, people on my email list, maybe that's a bit more tailored. And I say the majority of people on my email list are actually like small to medium business owners. On YouTube, you can look into seeing what those demographics are. And you might see, for example, that it's, I don't know, 18 to 35 men, for example. TikTok. Uh, I have no idea how you can kind of measure those. I know you can go into some of the analytics, but you might say that, well, the majority of the content I post is about uh, me going to the gym. So I'm going to presume that most of those people are interested in the gym and so on. This is the part here that everyone ignores. <clears throat> the number of people who I have built affiliate campaigns for to the point where we don't even build the campaigns for them like this. And then we'd say, okay, great. Let's push this out into your audience and their audience is tens of thousands of the wrong people. The reason this is so important, you're going to see this word come up a lot, and I know everyone talks about this, but without understanding who you're sending it to, everything else is irrelevant. We've got a real opportunity on our hands in terms of the model that uh, Sean and the guys at Ticker have set up, because everything from the delivery point onwards is taken care of. Everything. Everything. When people talk about affiliate marketing, I don't think they realize like how magical this opportunity is to be able to focus all of your time and attention on the attraction part of the process and then say, when the customer is ready to buy, hand it off to an expert who will deliver everything for a 70%. I'd love to pay my team 70% to take care of everything. That's like a crazy good margin. So this is why this is so important. And that's because this part of the process, the before part is taken care of entirely by their avatar. So that's a really quick audit that I want us to focus on. And that's going to determine where we look at next. I'll pause there for a second, Sean. Any questions so far, thoughts, anything you want me to go over again at all? No, I love it. This is clear. I'd say keep going. 
Okie dokie. So, the model that we're going to be using from a from a social uh, from a from a content and affiliate standpoint is we're going to post some content, we're going to build an audience, and we're going to get clicks. However, most people tend to get a big big segment of this wrong. They tend to go in completely the wrong direction. In an ideal world, we'll post something like a Facebook post, like a TikTok uh, video or a, a YouTube video. And for the sake of ease, I'm going to focus on YouTube because that's where I spend most of my time. And the idea is we then want to get views. And those views hopefully then allow us to create clicks. But what they also do is they build up the audience. So there's a little bit of a flywheel effect. If we can connect with our audience and our ideal customer in a way that makes them wanting to keep coming back for more, that that means you know you've got something where you're going to be able to uh, generate a lot of revenue. What's also really important is to understand that this isn't necessarily just about having um, a massive channel. We've done five-figure months purely through affiliate marketing on channels that are getting a few hundred views per video. The amount of views is almost irrelevant. It's more to do with the focus. Now, what people get wrong is they focus on the wrong metrics for a start, but they also don't post anything that's seen as interesting to their audience. They're posting stuff that is interesting either to them or in a really bizarre sense, to their um, competitors. I'll give you an example. The coaching company I ran um, previously to this was coaching agency businesses. And agencies want clients predominantly who are in the uh, small business sector. And I tell them, you need a niche. And so it could be anything from cam camera manufacturers uh, to pet store businesses to cleaning companies. It doesn't really matter. The amount of times that we would have a conversation with an agency and they would say, we're sponsoring events, we're sponsoring podcasts, we do adverts, but we just don't seem to get any returns from it. When I ask them, where are you sponsoring? Who are you sponsoring? What are the podcasts and events that you're sponsoring? It was staggering to me how often they would sponsor events and podcasts aimed at other agencies. Everyone on this call or watching this video might go, well, that's a, a dumb thing to do seems obvious but you would be staggered at the amount of people who make that mistake and then apply it to any kind of content that they push out the reason this is so important is because even if you decide to go down the short social route the social posting route purely email purely youtube purely podcasting or books it doesn't matter unless you're focused on the audience and what they are interested in, you're going to always struggle to get results. And that's why I want to come onto an area that's kind of irrelevant of the content, but it kind of stems everything else going forward. And so this kind of little like three overlapping circles here, this is, this is ultimately the fundamental principles of how we're going to create any kind of content. It could be emails, sales emails, sales webinars, landing pages, <laughs> video content, YouTube shorts. It really doesn't matter. The first thing that we want to understand is the hook. I'll come back to that in a second because without a hook, nothing else matters. And typically when people say, I don't know what type of content cr to create, it's because they don't have the hook and they don't have the, the next part as well. The hook is going to be something along the lines of, and obviously I'm kind of doing this off the top of my head. I've done a bit of research with Sean and, and, and Ticker, but for example, something along the lines of uh, choosing the five next stocks to invest in for free, because I know that the, the, the app is free for 14 days. Mm -hmm. Would that be within the realms of an offer that you could, you could yes, state about? Absolutely. Ticker? Yeah. Okay. Top five stocks, I'll even put free. So along those lines, we'll refine that in a minute. When you have a hook like this, everything else becomes exponentially easier. The mistake that people make is they focus too much on the product that they're trying to sell and not enough on what is interesting to the client. And the next part is then the niche. Now, 
Tick is a really interesting one because it's open. If anything, it's it's it seems to be more towards the non-investor and the non-stockbroker. Non-investor is the wrong the wrong term, but it's certainly not people who have got beginners. like twenty years of yeah beginners. Beginners is exactly what I put we, it as. There we go. I'll give you the percent split. So it's about eighty percent beginners, twenty percent your more experienced investors. That's perfect. Okay, so we've got our beginners, and which is which is absolutely perfect, right? That's mm -hmm. exactly what I put it. These two coming together here, this is our offer, right? In the middle here is where you're going to start being able to find some content. And what we can do is we can take these two overlaps and we could now state how this complete brand new beginner was able to find their top five stocks within five minutes of signing up for free. Now we'd want to tailor the title and tweak it and stuff. That becomes an extremely compelling offer to someone to make them go, that might be something I'm interested in. And then the final piece, this is the piece that people tend to miss out, is very simply the call to action. In this case, the actual app itself. Yep. I think one of the reasons that people struggle to, to make sales is they tend to either say, here's a link to an app that I've just downloaded. You should go ahead and check it out. <laughs> now, something's better than nothing, right? You're laughing, Sean, but we I've seen it, right? Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> right, we're, so... We're, I don't know if that's a hook. Like, sign up for this software. Are you really grabbing my <laughs> <Yeah>. attention there? <laughs> exactly. But And I think part of the problem is it becomes... People find it very difficult to talk about the app but if we flip it and start talking about the people, it becomes way more compelling. And the sales methodology that I have used for selling, well, for basically for selling anything, everything, but especially for affiliate marketing, is I will talk specifically about how this one brand new beginner, newbie investor who had never put any money anywhere found their first five stocks for free within five minutes. That is a compelling story and case study. And as I'm telling the story, I would rather go into and say, this is Sarah. In fact, uh, there's even, uh, you guys have this written out for you. Sean has collated all the um, reviews. Trust pilot, yeah. Right, into Trustpilot, right? You couldn't ask for a better series of stories now obviously i'm not saying let's use zach's story without his permission or anything but the point is that when i read about some of these about how easy it was i was a complete newbie i used to be completely overwhelmed with the amount of um, choices and options um and then to talk about to having newbies start talking about stocks slash etfs this is some of the most compelling story-based content we could put out here this one here, and there's also another one. Here we go from Ben. My por my portfolio has saw substantial growth since using. How Ben grew his portfolio with five minutes worth of work a week, mm -hmm. like that's an interesting story. Is a really interesting kind of um, like methodology that I want to share with you guys. And this is what I mean about the call to action. So there was a pitch that I used to do at the start of speaking events. And I'd walk up on stage and I'd say, you guys are all going to be furious with me because you're all going to have to buy brand new wardrobes. What we found is that eventually you're going to have to buy new clothes because your old ones don't fit you anymore. You've lost so much weight and gained so much energy that your family are going to be asking you, where have you managed to lose all this weight? How have you done it? You look like a new person. And best of all, someone that we've worked with in the past is able to spend more time with their grandchildren doing really strenuous activities. And I'd stop it there. Throughout that pitch, most people are like, oh my God, this sounds amazing. I, I would like to buy this product. And yet I haven't told you what the product is. I haven't told you whether it's an app. I haven't told you whether it's a diet pill. I haven't told you whether it's personal training. It's a book. It's a podcast, a program, an exercise machine. None of that. Because the human story between the hook, 
of losing weight, whole new wardrobe, and the personality, a grandmother who wanted to spend more time with her grandkids doing strenuous activities, those two came together. Now, at the very end of that pitch, if I then said, oh, and by the way, we basically did this with a app. You can go ahead and sign up for that here. It's a free 14-day trial, and we can take it from there. And then I'd go back into the story. If you focus on the overlap between the hook that someone gets and the type of niche or the type of person that someone is, you won't have a problem selling anything in the call to action section because you're telling the story of how they got it. Oh, and it just so happens it's because I use this app ticker. Just so happens I use this free web app, this free Android app, whatever, cool ticker that helps me do this. And you can even show a little bit of it. Take a bit of a pause there. Does that make sense so far, Sean? It it does. And I just, I want to hammer on something here. And you've probably seen this with other platforms too, is we actually don't really need or even want our customers yeah. or our affiliates to sell. Our platform should sell the customers themselves because it's it's a free platform, no credit card, the least amount of friction to get in. So you're really just, what I love there, you're not even talking about features, you're selling the benefits like, find top five stocks or top three stocks yep. for free, perfect for beginners, check it out. And then you're you're pretty much like opening a door. This is the metaphor I'm visualizing, opening a door for people, check it out. Yep. Ticker's responsibility, the platform is to sell people. It's not our affiliate's responsibility. Yeah, that's, that's, that's exactly how I put it. It's, it's opening the door. And that's why I love this model, right? Mm -hmm. the 30-70 split because so years ago i don't know if we mentioned this before but um i was actually a, i trained as a chef for like the first five years of my life that's what i wanted to do i worked in france mm -hmm. turns out i could not hack it i don't know if you've ever seen the bear on ah, FX one of my or, favorite shows right <laughs> my wife and i can't watch it we both used to be chefs because it's so accurate to how just ruthless that whole industry yeah. is right so we couldn't hack it i certainly couldn't hack it my wife was she was in the career a lot longer than i was and I, I remember leaving and the guy who was front of house at the time who would kind of sit you down and, and do that stuff i always remember thinking you couldn't pay me to do his job the idea of bringing someone in sitting them down talking to them having a conversation with them no matter what mood they're in no matter what the weather is doing mm -hmm. outside that person has to literally open the door, sit them down and make them feel like they're ready to order. The customer is probably pretty happy with the meal by then. When the meal comes out and it's put in front of them, they've already decided whether it's a, a, a nine or a 10 out of 10, right? Or if it's a, a two or a three out of 10. Mm -hmm. That process of opening the door is an enormous part of the trust process. But he said, there's no way I could ever do what you do in the mm -hmm. back, which is then taking on the responsibility, managing all the heat, managing the teams in the background, bringing out the product. The two halves have to work very, very well together. And when you have an opportunity to be able to say to an experienced, well-built product like this, I'm going to pass someone over to you after they've walked through the door, that's a huge relief to anyone on my end, which means we can focus on doing the interesting stuff for us, the content at the front of the process, opening the door. So I completely 100% agree with you uh, on that one, Sean. Sure. So... <clears throat> We've done the, the pitch, like I said, the whole new wardrobe where we're focusing in on the, the thing. What I want us to look at, I think I've got, here we are. This was something I just threw into chat GPT. Mm -hmm. And we can see that there's a few hooks come out. The actual, the technical term for this is called a currency, which can get a bit confusing because obviously you guys deal with stocks and ETFs and things. So, but other people call them funnels and I don't consider them funnels because I come from a funnel based background. So there's a lot of like, mixed metaphors and stuff. So I apologize, but the actual technical term for what we're looking at here is something called a currency. When someone walks into a, uh, uh, like a supermarket and they've got the cereal aisle in front of them. And I know that you guys in the States are just as bad as we are. There's like 30,000 varieties of cereal. None of those cereals are sold on how they're made they're all sold on the specific thing they do for the customer and the customer buys them thinking well i can literally pick that up and walk out with it it's so important to be able to physically say when i pick this up i'm buying 
I don't know, chocolate flavored whole grain cereal. Really, really important. Delicious. Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. My, Not good my, for my you. wife. No, exactly. Well, that's irrelevant. That could be another that's another webinar for another time. <laughs> right. And, yeah. And the size of the bowl that I used to eat them as well. Again, all all on the wrong side. Yeah. But when we look at those hooks and those currencies, what's really important about this, and this is one of the, ex- the really exciting opportunities, is even if everyone is selling the same platform, you can all use completely different hooks based on what the audience wants or what the or who the audience is. New mums are looking for something very, very different to... Uh, middle-aged men who have just got into cycling. Their two choices in cereal, completely different. They're, they're completely different. Kids are after something completely different from hippie health nut grandparents, right? Again, when we go to our grandmother's house, it would usually, it was actually the other way around. Then she'd laden us up with sugar and stuff. But mm-hmm. the point is that there's a lot of different hooks for essentially the same product, depending on who the person is. So I've just got a few here that were just kind of thrown up. Um, Kickstart, so starting your investment journey is really interesting. Uh, Under five minutes, no credit card needed. That is a hook in itself. Yeah. The number of people who, which is kind of interesting, right? I just threw this into chat and was like, hey, what what are some hooks and some currencies we've got from your homepage? And what's really interesting is that that person and that profile and that journey, there are people out there We've actually, I know we spoke about this kind of on the podcast, Sean, who are completely put off by this process of putting money away. In the UK, the way that pensions work is you obviously take a percentage of your paycheck mm-hmm. and then a pension advisor finds a place to invest it. And just with, I don't know, five minutes worth of research and an app like Ticker, you can take control of that. And the irony is you can actually end up making better choices than the entire pension right. <laughs> does, right? At right. least that's how it works in the UK, right? Correct. But most people will believe that they need some kind of crazy financial education, that they need a background with a lot of money. And most importantly, they immediately need to put their credit card in, which is going to put a lot of people off. Mm-hmm. We now have the opportunity to say to people, hey, if you want to take control of your money and start investing we can help you find some good stocks in under five minutes with no credit card. That in itself is a hook. There are 20 to 30 stories that we could tell about that one specific journey. If I was to tell that story over and over and over and over and over, that is what would build enough content. I'm not talking about the product. I'm not talking about the app. I'm not talking about how to invest. I'm just talking about Sam who you know, works in catering, but wants to start putting money away inside all the way over to uh, Joanne, who has just come out of an engineering degree, but doesn't really know how to get started with this stuff. Right. And there's tons of these hooks, you know, with the uh, kind of the the template of here's how to have this amazing box of cereal without dot, Mm -hmm. dot, dot, without heavy risk, without having to, you know, get a complete financial education and MBA, all of this type of stuff. And what's important is that we focus on one of these and you basically rinse and repeat that process. If we solve an interesting problem and we find something that connects with our audience, for example, get started, no credit card required, five mins, for example, there's no reason why I wouldn't want to talk about that process once, twice, 50 times. And then in every single one of those pieces of content, I can say, by the way, it's this app I use called Ticker. That's how we are able to do this. Don't feel that you have to constantly come up with something new every single time. If you find something that works, there's no reason why you can't rinse it. Does that make sense going through that? The totally. And repeat yeah, side? that's fantastic. And this is what most people do wrong is – they'll come up with a topic that either they themselves are interested in or, as I mentioned, their competition are interested in. I would understand, and you might go, surely people know what yields a 15% return means. Why would they? Why would they know that? They're complete brand new beginners in this particular niche. If we went after a different niche, it'd be different language. And so what people do is they create content at the level they're at, expecting other people to understand that. This is talking about the wrong part of the process. Correct. 
the next piece would then be saying, well, if I could then say, well, how to use great investments with Ticker. Yeah, we're getting slightly broader, slightly le- slightly more appeal, slightly more uh, accessible and relatable, but I'm immediately putting something in. And again, while Ticker is the name of the product, that is only going to be interesting to people who know what that is. If I was to say, um, here's how to get uh, phenomenal results with um, beta carabine, for example, you'd have to know what beta carabine was for you to know where the angle is, right? And so what we want to try and do is make it more accessible each time. And I promise you, this is all going to come together in, in the email portion or the content portion. New Android app shows when to buy the best stocks, slightly more relatable. Mm-hmm. But again, I don't maybe don't necessarily know what an Android app is. Maybe I'm not even with Android and with iPhone. Maybe I want a web app. Again, right. we're trying to make it as accessible as possible, right? Single mom earns 15% on her first stocks with this free app. Again, we're beginning to get closer to those story-based hooks and those story-based content that makes people go, this seems more accessible than something that I would want to check out. But again, 15%, maybe not so brilliant. And then finally, and again, these were things we threw together. uh, He saw huge growth in his portfolio, took him five minutes a week. We haven't mentioned the app. We haven't mentioned any of the kind of roadblocks. It's a really simple process it's easily understandable. It's way more accessible. Out of all of these, these two bottom ones, and these are taken from some of the reviews left on the site as well as a few videos that I created. But from here, this is where we can start creating actual call to call to action based content uh, focused around these initial hooks and, and stories. Does that make sense? Hundred percent. From this, this standpoint, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, and to be specific, to more ticker. What we found is when I first launched, I was focused on that top line there, like the returns. Yeah. Um, and I found that people really like that. That can be Greek to them. They don't, they can care, but that's not the focus. One one word that everybody seems to arrive on better than anything else is confidence. People at the end of the day, they oh, wow, just, yeah. that, that is the key word. When we started using that word, people, and I'll kind of use this metaphorical story, People want that feeling like they're resting their head on their pillow at night, yeah, yeah, yeah. knowing they're investing in strong businesses and they're not putting their money in bad businesses that can lose their money. Like that is that is that home run touchdown feeling. It's better than anything else. So confidence is the key driver. Yeah, interesting. That's such a good point. I love that. I love the thing you said about they put their head down and they sleep better. Like yeah. that's the mark of confidence, right? Is knowing that you can sleep well. Um, yeah. I think that was the best ever investment advice I was given. It was like, do with your money what's going to help you sleep better at night. Like yeah. that was just th- this broad strokes, right? So when you when you start looking at really accessible, relatable experiences like yeah. this it makes the rest of the process so much easier. And so what I want to do is share now these kind of five or four templates that I use. Now, we use these across um, social content. We use these on social posts. We use these on YouTube posts. We use these in videos. And obviously, there is an infinite number of ways to create social content. One of the ways that a friend of mine absolutely crushes it on the short form stuff is he breaks a case study down into five, basically, components. The big problem the person had, what they had tried before, the consequences of not fixing that, what they did to fix it, and the results they got, right? So a really simple case study. He records 20 problems, 20 people, 20 results, 20 consequences, and 20 results, and just cuts them up into different short forms ones. So kind of mixes and matches, that's one way. I didn't have time to go into every single possible way we can create kind of sales content and and building an audience and and email content. But this way here, the reason I love this, I even called this my magic trick is because when we do this with clients, my whole shtick is I'll guarantee you, I can get you a call, like book a call that you could sell to within the next, I don't know, 15 minutes And it sounds like nonsense, but the reason is because I don't mention anything about the product. For example, this would be a great social post and it's it's something, again, I can show some examples if if, if needed. Hey team, I've just downloaded an app that shows me the first five stocks that I should buy, PM me all the deets. 
this is so low touch, no pressure, no spam. Right. And it's really clear that if someone's interested in buying their first stocks and they want to do it in like in a nice, simple way, this would be the way that you would do it. And I go, great, here's the details. Here's the link. Let me talk you through it if you need to. Or if you wanted to, why don't we jump on a quick call and I can just talk you through like how we, how we kind of did this. And again, the methodology is very, very similar. It's all based around the hook. It's all based around the thing that the person wants. It's all based around the currency. Another really interesting methodology is, um, hey, Sean, I'm running some training uh, on the next five stocks that you should buy. Should I send the link over? Again, we're focused on the thing that someone wants. And I kind of wish I'd got that confidence sleep well thing from you earlier. But the, the point is, right, it's so it's so better, good. Better late than never. Um, yeah, exactly. That's right. And this is recorded, right? So sure. Um, if someone was to say I'm running some training on the next stocks, five stocks you can buy with confidence, would you like to get the link? If they say yes and they reply to your email, you can send them the sign up link. And then on the webinar or on the video or whatever it is, that's where you mention ticker. The point is that we're constantly focused on the thing that they want. Uh, I've just downloaded an app that stopped me from investing in a stock that I thought was safe. Turns out it was a dud. Can I send you the deets? That it, um, making money is nice, but lo like, oh, yeah. you know, you know, the rule, right? Like yeah, the people pain, there's, yeah. there's more emotional attachment to losing money or, or yeah. the avoidance of losing money. So right, that third one there. Ooh, oh, that's well, a good this one, one here. Then this is something like, let's say hypothetically, you have a list of a thousand people, a thousand yeah. people on your email list. And you sense, and I literally, the emails look like this. Uh, I don't think I've got any examples of the other ones, ones I've sent to my clients or sent on behalf of my clients. I'll see if I can find them at some point. But these do so well that people are shocked at how simple it is to start getting leads booking in or people signing up to whatever it is, like sales calls or booking in on their calendar or watching video content or whatever it is. Because again, it's short. And more importantly, I'm, I'm focusing on the thing they care about more than anything. So, uh, yeah, it sort of it turns out it was a dud and stopped me from investing in a stock that I thought was safe. Again, around that kind of Love confidence it. play. Let's say that you had 50 people reply to this and say, yeah, I'd, I'd be interested in learning more. First of all, I would just send them the link. I would send the ticker link and I'd go, well, here's the app that I use. Actually, yep. why don't you go ahead and check that out? But what I would also then do is go, well, they were interested in this concept. That could probably become a video where I just walk through the case study of this happening. And then I would want to try and interview a few other people who had had a similar process, uh, who had done something similar. Um, and I would want to tell their story and I would want to search for case studies and I would want to look for all of these different angles around the same basic topic. What's really powerful about this, by the way, is let's say that someone had read... I don't know. It's a bad example, but principles by Ray Dalio. And they said that there's a, a YouTube video out there about some guy who read this book and it stopped him in from investing in a stock that turns out is a dud, but he mm -hmm. attributes the success to the book stuff that was laid out in that book. There's still no reason why you can't tell that story, talk through that process and say, and luckily you don't even have to read the entire book anymore because it turns out there's this app called ticker. It basically does all of this condensed into two screens plus you know, pre 14 day trial, uh, no credit card required at the start. You can find your top five stocks you want to invest in first for five, the first five within five minutes. You're not having to constantly say it's that product that did it. You can take the very relatable story someone has and saying it just so happens that this product also does the same thing it's a very very powerful technique and this is what i mean by this rinse and repeat process because if i had 50 people reply to this i would send this email again in another nine to 12 weeks i would just send the same one out on autopilot i would post it as a social media post and the only person i would listen to <laughs> 
that was telling me that I should stop selling this, sending this email is my accountant. When my accountant says, hey man, that email campaign that you're sending doesn't result in sales anymore, that's when I stop sending it. We're too focused on trying to create novel, great creative out there campaigns all the time. If you look at the top, and I'll show you some real life examples, the top examples of people who are absolutely crushing it, they take the same basic process and principle each and every time. And that's what they promote. And that's the content that they create. Mm -hmm. um, this one over here, I think I was just kind of playing around. Five. Oh yeah, no, this is another good one. Sorry. <clears throat> um, this is a bit more qualified and this would yep. be for people who are probably closer to buying. I'm working with five business owners in the next 30 days to start this 15% portfolio club. Does that sound like something you want to join? Now, it, admittedly. It, it, sorry to interrupt you there. It feels more B2B, okay. probably more um, SMB. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Um, yeah. I think if I was to, uh, the people I would look to for this are like personal trainers because they're sure. typically very good at like, um, I want to help you know five people lose that Christmas weight over the, over the first four weeks of January. Um, if that's something you're interested in, then let me know. But the concept, the, the actual, again, the technical term is called a 5130. So I'm looking to work with five people. It could be, I'm looking to work with five new mums. I'm looking mm -hmm. to work with five um, close to retirees, whatever it is, who want to do this one thing. And again, choose their five first stocks with confidence or whatever it might be yeah. in the next 30 days, 14 days, five minutes, whatever it is. The reason I like this is, again, the hook that comes out of it is, it's clear that this group of people want this one thing. They've told you what they want to buy. They basically told you what they're willing to part with money for. So why don't we continue to capitalize on that one thing? So the concept is 5130. I'm looking to work with five types of people who want this one thing over the next 30 days. Hit reply and let me know. Again, you'd be surprised at how many people would say, yeah, that sounds really, really awesome. Great. Here's the affiliate link. Sign up. Uh, there's a bunch of training inside that. And I'll shoot you an email in a couple of days to see how you're getting on. Sure. This methodology, super, super light touch, doesn't require a huge amount of work. This one here, I think I've got it here. Uh, so this is a, this is admittedly, this is not the screenshot, but uh, mm -hmm. hey, client name. We're putting together a new program for financial services businesses who want to land another $1 million client this year. Can I show you how we're doing that? email he sent me after he was pretty pissed off. Uh, hey, Mike, I stand corrected. We just got our first call booking through right now. Uh, really sorry for doubting the approach. It's clearly struck a chord. Super excited to see where this leads. I have dozens of these screenshots of people being sent what looks like a very simple email that book sales and books calls because it's so specific about what the person is interested in, the client, rather than what the product is about. Uh, and again, that's how we then end up taking that through to a, to our content as well. I've got a couple examples to share, but that's kind of about it. I can't believe we're already at 10 to the hour already. It shows that I just will waffle Pack. on for 100 years. But Pack full of value here. Um, I have to say this about your business so the audience is fully aware. <laughs> so what Mike really focuses on is helping agencies sell projects that are $25,000 or more. Yep, that's exactly um, and, it. Yep. And going for that, you know, really getting yourself out of a mindset instead of doing these onesie, twosie, one-off, small business, uh, $5,000, $10,000 project, let's really elevate and go to that next level. Um, so yep. he really helps with that, that framework. So that previous email we're just looking at, that's really good stuff. That's more B2B play. Yeah. Um, ticker, of course, more B2C. So whoever, you know, if you're an affiliate out there, depending on what products you promote, it is, you know, B2C kind of stays in one lane, B2B kind of in another lane, but there may be some overlaps. I think it's more about the, how you frame the, like if I was, if I was a, I don't know, an easy one is like a supplements company, which mm -hmm. is, Purely B to C, right? Correct. At least on at least on the smaller scale. Yeah. If I was to wanting to sell that, the last thing I would do is list off the ingredients, right? <laughs> That's not going to be interesting to people, right? right? If I was to say to someone, I want to work with five cyclists over the next 30 days to help them, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Cyclists is a bad thing. I don't know anything about cycling. Runners. A bunch of runners who want to run their first ever. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. A bunch of CrossFitters. In fact, that's actually, that is exactly where I, who I'd work with. I want to work with a bunch of CrossFitters 
um, who want to um, like PB their bench press or something over the next 30 mm-hmm. days. Would that be interesting to you? Does that sound like something you want to join? The structure is very similar to that B2B style email. But what I've learned is that people tend to pay attention more to the interesting language that's in the email where people go, that's something I want. I want yeah. that. My wife, for example, she helps people specifically run their first ever sub four hour marathon. Whoa. That's that's considered, yeah, it's, it's that's fast, right? And that's her thing. She's like, I'll help you run your first ever sub four hour marathon. So that's the call out that she puts out. And it's very, very similar to this. It's it, very, very similar. Like I'm looking to work with two people who want to run their first ever sub four hour marathon um, this year. If you're interested, let me know. Um, so the the framework, I think, is taken from a more of a B2B style, but yeah. the la- it's important. And I completely agree that it's the language that goes into it. Yeah. It has to be something that the people are interested in, the, the human beings. And that's what really kind of allows this type of content to to. Um, right. to take off and, and be noticed you know right on yeah that's absolutely but you know at the end of the day it's it's not it's not over engineered and it's not that complicated it's like you just want to use a language put yourself in their shoes what is the benefit or what is the pain you're removing or the value add to them don't worry about the features like with ticker like find five awesome stocks that can make you money in the next five minutes yeah, you know, yeah. It, invest confidently on your own in the next 14 days or less, you know, yeah, that, yeah. that, right. That type of language, like, Oh, okay. You have my attention. Who cares about the features? Like you'll learn what yep. those are. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. And again, that's your job. Like that's your job to deliver on the features. It, right. It, exactly. Just so, open the door. Like, Hey, here's what yeah. I'm using. No, no risk. Get in there, check it out. And if it's not your thing, no worries. We always say like, you know, you want to test drive the car before you drive it off the lot. Like, if you don't like it, like, you don't have to use it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. But again, that those are all like massive selling points. Mm-hmm. You know, I think a lot of people would presume that in order to start putting money away and, and investing it, they have to be involved with brokers and fund managers and have meetings with people. And the, the idea to say, actually, none of that's true true and we'll even let you try it out for 14 days first like i remember when banks first started offering this and people were they literally couldn't understand like so i can test out the account and then i can like leave it it was just it seemed so revolutionary because previously it was just wrapped up in so much um like paperwork and forms and stuff so there are so many things to sell against but in my experience i think it's because people the, the reason they struggle is because they they try to focus too much on as you said, the features rather than the stories right. and the the, um, the things that people want by the end of it, which are the benefits. Right. Well, is there anything else you'd like to share with the audience? So there's only one light like, piece. I just want to kind of to to sure. like show that there are people who are doing this that works. Uh, screen two. So the first thing I want to talk about in terms of uh, I would call rinsing and repeat. Noah Kagan, our good friend, Noah. Hmm. Uh, yeah, so his YouTube channel, he's done something really, really interesting. If we look at his most popular videos, uh, what he the most his most popular series of videos is asking a millionaire. So asking a millionaire how to make a million, asking an eighty year old millionaire, asking a billionaire how to make a million. How I turned, asking a seventy billionaire, asking a super yacht owner, uh, asking a millionaire, asking a millionaire. Like you can see a pattern. Yes. And what's really funny is people are like, yeah, but I, 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 want, I need to produce new videos each time. Why? Why do you need to produce new videos each time? Having studied these a lot, this is the same basic video every single time. What's really interesting, this isn't even him asking that. That's his wife. He mm. like that, that shot there is entirely set up. That, that thumbnail is entirely set up for the rest of the video. And it's just him interviewing people and talking to them about their very human lifestyle, 99.999% of people are unlikely to become a billionaire. And yet there's still something extremely accessible about the way that this is formatted. So to speak to, and the other, the other person I kind of wanted to, uh, I never remember how to to say his name. This guy's a young, young kid, uh, 1.3 months, 1.3 million subscribers. 
if we look at his most popular videos, it is uh, zero to making a hundred thousand, uh, money making apps, start drop shipping, fail business, secret YouTube channel. These are all stories. They might come across as here's how to make money. His most recent ones, the the latest, I want to say eight, maybe more than that. The latest, at least these ones here. They all sell a dropshipping piece of software. Not once does he mention what the dropshipping software is in anywhere here. In fact, it might be slightly different because he's got these ones about like quitting YouTube and stuff. <clears throat> and you watch it. The best example, in my opinion, is this one here. I bought a failed business and turned it around. That's accessible. People understand it. Mm -hmm. It's a story. It's 13 minutes long. So it's clearly not an hour long webinar or a short and all he does is talk through what he does. There is shockingly little educational content in this. Like, he's an interesting and engaging guy. He's quite funny. He doesn't take himself too seriously. And then there's the part where he's basically pitching you the software that he has both an affiliate of and sponsored by. And you're like, I don't even, I didn't even realize I was being pitched to, right? But buy it because it's so it's just a part of the story it's like him saying i bought this business turned it around turns out they had a real problem with stock management inventory problems so i use this software called i don't know what it is called like zendrop or something mm -hmm. and with zendrop i was able to set this all up and now i'm able to see that i'm actually 20 grand in the hole just happened to be part of the story the product was part of the journey and that's what makes this so powerful so if people are looking at doing this type of stuff this guy here has pretty much nailed this format. Bieza, I guess is how I pronounce that. I never know how to pronounce his name. Mm -hmm. um, but if you find a methodology or, or a, a hook that works, just keep using that hook. But that's about it from uh, from me, man. That's all I wanted to share. Awesome. Well, cool. I'll check this guy out. Thanks for the heads up. Um, but yeah, this was, definitely. Yeah. This was great, Mike. And to any of the people who stayed to the end of the video here, thank you. Uh, you're you're in that one percent. <laughs> <laughs> sticks around but uh definitely reach out to me if you want to get in touch with um uh, mike mike what what's the best location people can reach you uh, there's probably my email address which is just michael at sellyourservice.co.uk um and then obviously the youtube channel which is just youtube.com forward slash sell your service so sell your service is the name of the business um awesome. yeah there's two best places to find me awesome all right, Mike, we'll certainly be in touch soon, but thank you so much for your time. Thanks for having me, mate. Good to see you. Cheers, Sean. See ya.